club. So I'm going to stand in front of the stick here, right? Uh -huh. And I want you to go to the top and almost feel a little bit outside on the backswing. Okay. And then as you come down really slowly, I want to tap the shaft against the stick. Huh. Right? So up to the top and then drop it in. And the higher you can get it up on the shaft, the better, because that's really teaching you to shallow. Okay? So the point of this isn't to go hard at all. It's just to get that slow motion feeling down. Okay. Right? Um, am I doing any, any manipulation with these things? Down. Don't worry about that too much. Just more like simply put, try and get the shaft. Um, I'm here, right? Yeah, tap in. Yeah, so a little bit outside to get it across. Like yep. And then up to the top. And then really slowly drop it down. Good, like that. Perfect. So, I mean, this is a drill that you can do 100 times a day, right? right? From home and just getting the sequencing of it. Good, really good. It's, it starts right at the top, right? Yeah, right at the top. Yeah, and it's sort of like go to the top for me, and I'll, I'll just kind of direct your club down. So it's kind of just the club's going this way. Okay. Like that. That's the feeling we're trying to generate. Like mm -hmm. that. Okay. When I do that, it feels like my club face is open. Yeah, and it will feel that way. Yeah. yeah. So now go to the top again. Mm -hmm. So the feeling I, I want you to have with your club face is more like this. Okay. Right, kind of that. Is that okay for you, mm -hmm. tension-wise? Yeah. Okay. So it should almost feel like kind of knuckles down. Okay. Right? So that's why guys like Victor Hovland is a really good one to copy, right? Because he's got this really nice shallowing action and he's got that really nice bow in his wrist. So I do the thing now? Yeah. Like yeah. I, when I bring it down? Yeah, that, you okay. got it. So try and feel it together. Good. Yep. And that club face is shut. Right. And now when I look at it on camera, passing the club here, yep. right? Like the club at P6 here is down in here and it's nice and shut. Right. And that's kind of the feeling you want. Now, you're probably never going to get there, but it's to avoid getting it out there so we can get it nice and straight, right? Like, mm -hmm. what you should be looking for in your swing is that P6, meaning the club is parallel to the ground. Yep. It should be in line with your target line or your foot line. Like, that's going to cause your, your big hook, and that's going to cause your big slice, right? Right. So getting it somewhere in that range, like straight down the line. Yep. That's, you know, if you look at any great ball striker, they're pretty close to that, yeah. to that straight line. Some might be a little bit on the inside, some a little bit across the line, but they pretty much get it there every time. Okay. So, you know, what I was taught from a young age, and. From, from the coaches I worked with is just over exaggeration drills, slow motion until you really get the feeling of it. Right. And then you can ramp it up and go full speed with right. it. Right. But you can't really do it full out until you get that slow motion feel down. Right. Right. Let's see how much memory my phone has. I'm going to keep going here. And then drop it and shut. Good. Yep. Yeah. Really good. Nice. So to me, Mark, these reps matter almost more than range reps, right? right. Like just getting the feeling of it down. Uh, I remember seeing a tweet from, remember Hal Sutton? Ever heard that guy's name? I heard it. So yeah. he was like a PGA champion, uh, won the tour champion, or uh, won the players against Tiger. And he, he in a tweet, he said, uh, I think a couple years back, you know, I had, he said he roughly had a million reps in his career. And if he could have done 500,000 of those with just air swings without hitting a ball, he would do it in a heartbeat. Because it really allows you to feel creative with the movement as opposed to, you know, we're prisoner to the golf ball. We're always wired towards our instincts. Mm -hmm. So the swing you've been doing for as long as you played, you're more likely to go right to that if you're not getting these reps in. Right. And that's why, like, for you, passing the club, like, the way we'd start to work on this in, uh, without, without the stick and actually hitting balls is you get to the top and route it this way get to the top, route it this way, and then step in, and then just try and feel that as you come through. And you can even... So your muscle memory, what it's gonna do, is gonna get you way out here, right? Mm -hmm. On the way down with an open face, right? Right. So I'm getting you to feel 
this drastically, and you're probably not going to get there when okay. you go full out. You're, you're probably going to be perfect. Okay. Or maybe just a little bit inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Like, it's different every, for every golfer. But basically, the only way to fix this is to feel like you're way in there. Right, okay. Right? It's the only way. Over exaggerated. Yeah, you got it. Should I do this one like a... Yeah, so, so feel it twice, right? Like, mm -hmm. just give it a couple feels. Just like that stick drill we were doing. As many as you need to feel it, and then you're gonna step in and then just hit one. Uh, you know, at the highest level, it's still relevant, but mm -hmm. there's even guys like Seamus Power. You heard of that guy's name? Heard of it. Yeah, he's like an Irish PJ Tour player, and he talks about how, like, when he got out on tour, he felt like he needed to do all these fancy shots, and then he realized he plays his best when he just aims at his target and swings, mm. right? And like guys like Brooks Kepka too, you know, he pretty much will probably aim up just to the left middle and, and let it cut. Uh, the balls and the clubs are made to go straight today, so to me, we should always be striving to get our club path and our face angle on track, man. They're pretty much close to neutral, okay. around zero, right? Yeah. So I would even recommend, like, get on track, man, a little bit, uh, maybe once a month if you can, mm -hmm. and or even once every two months, and so then just see where your club path and face angle is at. Start with club path. If your club path is, like, negative six or plus six then you got to move it closer to zero mm -hmm. right so i would bet for you it'd be more like a negative four negative five right and if you can get it to like between negative two and plus two out to in or in to out then okay. you're in you're in a good spot okay right like my driver is usually around two degrees into out my wedges are around three degrees into out uh and that's i can still control that but if i get it to like that four to six range into out where i'm where I'm at if I'm being lazy with my swing, yeah. then I start hooking the hell out of it and pushing it and I'm a mess with my swing. Okay. Right. Trackman can uh, you know, really help you out of a lot of bad swing flaws. Foresight okay too? Yeah, foresight's fine, okay. for sure. Anything that gives you, you know, club data. Golf's easy. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy at all. Okay, that sun's coming out. Thank God. Yeah. I needed it. Yeah, I don't know how people played golf the other day. It was like a thousand degrees outside. Oh man, yeah. Two days ago was really bad. <laughs> Yesterday evening too was pretty rough. Lovely. Good. I mean, ball flight never lies, right? Like, if I see that tight little draw, it tells me your club path is probably a couple degrees in and out, and the face angle is maybe a couple degrees shut. Yeah. Right? I'm just afraid that, like, I'm closing it too much or something. It's going to, like, go that way. But I mean, at that, that yeah, so that's a good question. <laughs> like, because I find players like you who are more, you know, exploring and more seeking out knowledge are more likely to flip-flop. Yeah. But you take one concept and drill it to death. Yeah, yeah. And then you're way on the other end of the spectrum, and now we have to fix the hook. So just monitor it. Like if you start hitting consistent draws, then you know you may you might need to feel a little bit more like or consistent hooks. Let's say you might need to feel a little bit more shoulder rotation and feel the face open, mm -hmm. right? So like to feel that fade pattern, you know, I want to feel like I get to the top and just get the shoulders spinning open a little bit right. with an open face. But I don't think you're gonna have that problem yet. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. It's always good to keep in the back of your mind though. I'm just gonna do whatever the balls say. <laughs> exactly. Like, yeah. I don't care. Yeah. Let the ball be your teacher, right? <laughs> My coach has always told me growing up is the ball is the best teacher. It never lies. That's awesome. Wow. Compressed. <laughs> I like that response. Surprise. Uh, Good. And you can even see here, like, you know, another way you can tell club path without even looking at your swing if you don't have a tripod is divot line. Right. Right. So it looks to me, it looks like you're aiming between black and blue. Yeah. And you're hitting it pretty much there, and your divot line is just slightly, almost at the black. Right. right. So it tells me that's a bit of an in-out path. Okay. Right. So now the way you can really check it to be specific is just throw the line on either side of the divot. And you can see there, like that's. Okay. We're getting that point of just inside the black. Right. Right. Whereas before your old lines were over there. Yeah. So you made a pretty significant change just by routing the club differently. Right. Right. That might be for a four to six degree difference. Mm -hmm. Right. So 
another simple way you can get it too, and I mean, this might seem like a band-aid fix, but our eyes are very, you know, they can have a really big control on our body, right? So just throwing a stick there on that little in-out motion can encourage you to, to kind of get the shallowing action a little bit more. Right. Right, like, what I'll always do, let's pass my spot for a sec. Anytime I feel like I'm coming back from a layoff or I mm -hmm. start out, I'll just throw that stick there. And I'm not doing it to like jam the club this way. Right. I'm more doing it to almost feel like my shoulders are okay. on that line to start out. Right. Right. So I'll make some swings where I really feel like I'm going to get my shoulders going to the left. Just to ensure that I don't, you know, get that feeling of going like this. Yeah. Right. And I think because I kind of knew about this whole thing, like the hinge, the back swing. Yeah. And I've tried it forever. And I think the whole reason why I couldn't do it probably my setup. Yeah, partly. Now I'm like, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you can't, you know, you can't build a strong house on a weak foundation, right? Yeah. Now that the stuff about like alignment grip, you know, loading, oh, everything to do with your setup, right? That's probably the, from what I see on a daily basis, and I don't have research to support this, but it's just, you know, giving 30 lessons a week, this is what I see, yeah. is most golfers' swings don't change all that much, but their setups change a lot, right. drastically, right? So if you go to a PGA Tour range and watch, I've been to a lot of those, and what you see is a lot of guys working on setup. I mean, they're not working on their swing. They're maybe working on one big swing movement, and that's mm -hmm. it. But, you know, they're constantly looking at ball position, and, you know, they're even using their coach as their second set of eyes, right? So that's the stuff that, in your mind, you should always say to yourself, like, okay, is my is it off yeah. right I'll, I'll give you something too I, i've got something called like a a swing checklist protocol i think it's called and it's just basically going through all those elements because i want you to like if you're really hitting it poorly and i'm not around mm -hmm. go through all those elements first okay and then if you're if you're kind of messed up on it then message me and say hey what's going on right right because a lot of those things can you know easily fix your swing right right for instance that ball position thing i told you about my swing like i was hitting my driver poorly all year getting too excited putting the ball position forward and all of a sudden I was hitting everything in the toe and trying to save it and I just moved it back three inches and now I'm hitting the driver better than ever yeah didn't change the swing huh. right because like you know if you're hitting your seven iron really well then all of a sudden your driver is way off and you're, you're applying the swing you feel like you should be applying it's got to be something in your setup right right and it could even be stuff like t-height yeah. right so I'm gonna just um <laughs> right but when I would go to the like a lot a bad habit of mine when I was a kid was like I'd play nine holes and then I would play like crap and then I would go to the hitting net and try and video my swing and figure it out. Mm -hmm. Or my brothers, they would just keep playing, even if they were playing poorly, and they'd figure out how to turn a four over on the front nine to a four under on mm -hmm. the back nine, right? Where I would shoot like a, the same score, but then, you know, the next round, it's like, okay, now I gotta prove what I just did into the net. Right. I don't even know if it's working or not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, yeah, just little stuff like that can go a long way. But I really like where your swing's getting to today. That's good. Oh, this is, this is wild. <laughs> Yeah, so I like the shallow part there, just a bit on the back foot. Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you feel like, this is a really important point, if you feel like you lose it during a lesson or during a practice session, go back to more swing feels. Okay. And I even, I'll even do that myself on the course. Uh, a few years ago, I'd be giving a lot of playing lessons to some of my competitive guys. And I would say to them, if they really lost their swing on like two or three swings in a row, I had a rule, three swings in a row, I want you to rush ahead to your next shot and do like five to 10 practice swings over okay. feeling your technical feel just to get yourself back on track. Right. And if that doesn't work, then maybe just go down to a wedge and, and, and keep feeling it over and over mm -hmm. again until you get it, right? That one felt like I was, I felt like it was quick on the downswing. A little bit quick, okay. Yeah. Good, yep, love it. So stay there and you're finished. Yeah. Well, you can stay there, but if, if I look at your front toe, right, you're kind of up like yeah. this mm -hmm. and falling back mm -hmm. a little bit, right? So I want to see you more, more posted up like that. Okay. Okay. Good miss though. Nothing wrong with hitting a dead straight when you miss it. I, I take it. How would I, uh, would I just be more stacked? Yeah, more stacked. You got it. That Grant Wade feel. Yeah. <laughs> That's compression right yeah. there.
and I look at your lead foot, right? And you're more, yeah, it's trying more to, that way. Yeah. It's good. Those irons so, sound so nice when you catch them. It does. It sounds really nice. Yeah, they don't, uh, it's a different sound. Definitely, yeah. Just that like heavy sound. I like that as a miss. Yeah. I think most golfers would kill to fall out of it and still hit it that straight, <laughs> right? So then I started almost uh, like coaching as much, playing as much as I started coaching. And it made me a way better coach just because I was able to connect with what actually works on the golf course. Right. As opposed to just hurling all these concepts at someone and hoping they work. Yeah. Right. And that's like, like anytime I hear a coach who, who has either not had a, like a playing pedigree, right. Or they play five times a year, I get a little bit skeptical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a few out there that are different, but like you look at all the great coaches throughout the history of the game and most of them were players like Butch Harmon was a pro golfer you know George Gankis was pro mm -hmm. uh, I think Chris Coleman was a pretty good player Sean Foley's one of the only guys out there that wasn't like much of a player himself mm -hmm. but even like the great psychologist Bob Rutelli he shot a 63 before right so it's uh, yeah there's a lot of knowledge out there that's coming from guys that are you know not really actually proving it on the golf course right, right? there's a lot a lot <laughs> <laughs> My thoughts on your ball play, like getting it higher, right? Like, I do see this often, like when you're trying to manipulate your swing, you hit it lower. Mm -hmm. Most golfers do, and that's mainly because you, you're subconsciously slowing down the time of movement. Mm -hmm. and the slower you go, the lower it's going to go. Also, too, like just getting the weight more forward will help you launch it a little bit higher. Okay. Right. So I wouldn't, again, I wouldn't worry too much about your ball play right now in terms of height. It's more just getting it on your target line, because that's. I don't care what anyone says. That's where the confidence starts is when you're hitting it on your line. Okay. Right? You can go and play that ball all day yeah. and still shoot a pretty damn good score. Right. Right. As long as you're not carrying it over lakes all day. That's true. <laughs> That's true. But it is true though. I want you to start working on this one from home. Yep. But we're going to modify it a little bit just for your swing, right? Okay. So I want you to go to the top, really get that step or that pause, 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 pause and then step into your finish okay and hold it for as long as you want just to get the feeling down right so up to the top pause 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 and then step right just to get off that back foot a little more efficiently okay. right now uh when you're swinging through are you do you feel like you're pushing off your right foot to yeah a little bit yeah okay. but i find like with the step drills you do that enough it just starts to teach you and you get the feeling of it, right? So yeah. I'll just show you one more time, right? Like the, the first the first version of the step drill is obviously, you know, getting the big step forward, right? Right. And then the final iteration of it would be normal stance and just watch my left foot here. I did just a, just a little bit of a hop mm -hmm. to get the feeling down. Because from the top, it should feel like that a little bit. Okay. Right? Do you feel like you're exploding off that foot too? Yeah, a little bit of drive up. Yeah, like that's okay. kind of ground force stuff, but it's more just getting the feeling of pushing forward, right? Like you already do a pretty good job of that. Like I do see you get a bit of a squat in the post, mm -hmm. right? I just more want you to think with this step drill, just getting, just pushing off the back foot, right? Right. Feet together? Or? Yeah, feet together. So go to the top and pause and then step off and swing. Good, yep. So the step is an important point. The step happens before you let the club drop. Right. Right. So lower body initiates the downswing. Good. You'll probably feel more power that way too. It does feel powerful. Right. You think about any time you like throw, you know, throw a ball, right? Like you don't throw a ball by going and then stepping. That's yeah. what's hilarious, yeah, right? Yeah. You're always going to go a step and a throw. And the same thing as the golf swing, right? Like a lot of amateurs will get to the top 
and just want to throw the hands down right as opposed to stepping and then throwing from there right right 